We begin with a new wave of Israeli attacks after the deadliest day so far in the latest conflict between Israel and Hamas. Israeli forces continue to hammer Gaza overnight, and there's no end in sight. These attacks come after at least 42 people were killed there yesterday, including children. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says he wants Hamas to pay a heavy price for firing thousands of rockets into Israel, and he says he grieves for all civilians who've died. Overnight, dozens of Israeli airstrikes pounded the Gaza Strip. As spider jets continue to smash neighborhoods, although Israel insists they are surgical strikes on Hamas targets. Six-year-old Susie is pulled from the rubble of what was her home after being trapped for seven hours. Her mother and four siblings were all killed in the Israeli strike. Riyad Ashkuntana is her father. <laughs> He says, I was filled with all the anger of the universe, but when I heard that one of my daughters was alive, I thank God. The evisceration of some of Gaza's tallest tower blocks by Israeli fighter jets have been caught on live television. Like this 12-story building, which housed foreign media, including the Associated Press. Journalists were warned to leave ahead of the strike that's being called an assault on press freedom. What is Speaking to CBS's um, Face the Nation, Israeli Prime Minister that. Benjamin Netanyahu defended the attack. Uh, an intelligence office for the Palestinian terrorist organization housed in that building that plots and organizes the terror attacks against Israeli civilians. So it's a perfectly legitimate target. Despite the enormous devastation across Gaza, Hamas is continuing its rocket campaign against Israel, causing damage like this in the southern Israeli town of Ashkelon. The Middle East conflict is also a test for President Biden. Here's what he said last night in a pre-taped message for the Muslim holiday of Eid. We also believe Palestinians and Israelis equally deserve to live in safety and security and enjoy equal measure of freedom, prosperity, and democracy. And my administration is going to continue to engage Palestinians and Israelis and other regional partners to work towards sustained calm. President Biden's predecessors have also had to navigate this Israeli-Palestinian conflict, but now he is also dealing with an additional challenge. Progressives in the Democratic Party are publicly calling for more support of the Palestinian people and criticizing his response so far. Now, the president has repeatedly said that Israel has the right to defend itself against acts of terrorism, which is what he told Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu over over the weekend during their second conversation in a week. But high profile Democrats are urging the president to take swift action as the number of civilian casualties continues to rise. In an op ed, Senator Bernie Sanders wrote that Israel has the right to defend and protect its people, but that the United States must stop supporting Netanyahu and recognize that while Israel has the absolute right to live in peace and security, so do the Palestinians. It's been five days since. Hamas brazenly fired rockets at Jerusalem and other Israeli cities in a totally unprovoked attack. This past week, millions of Israelis were forced into bomb shelters as missiles rained down on our cities. Several Israelis have been killed. Many more have been wounded. You know and I know no country would tolerate this. Israel will not tolerate this. Israel has responded forcefully to these attacks, and we will continue to respond forcefully until the security of our people is reinstated and restored. I want to remind the world that in firing on our cities, Hamas is committing a double war crime. They're targeting our civilians and hiding behind Palestinian civilians, effectively using them as human shields. Defeating Hamas does not only serve Israel's interest, it serves the interests of all those who seek peace, stability, security in the Middle East. First Thessalonians 5.3